I've got a quote for you from a 1996 movie called Multiplicity, where Michael Keaton plays a character that gets cloned multiple times. The quote goes like this, you know, sometimes you make a copy of a copy, it's not quite as sharp as, well, the original. Turns out, same is true for our code. <laughs> I received an email plea from a student the other day. They're working on their projects. And the email went something along the lines of this. I've been working on my final project and cannot seem to get much of it to work. I see projects online all over the place with lots of code, but I can't seem to get it to work together. None of them teach you how to do it. They just give you the code. Where do I start? Well, you know, Whenever you're talking about copy and paste code, whenever somebody gives you code, you copy it, you paste it into your project and try and get it to work, you know, it seems like it might be a time savings, but it's not. Copy and paste can cause all sorts of problems. So where do you start? By the way, I'm in no way saying you shouldn't watch a demonstration of coding. Please do. It's a great way to learn about how to code. But in this copy and paste world, really, all you're going to get is a copy of their project, not your project. What you're going to do is just duplicate or clone their project. You're going to lose something in the process. Don't you want to make it your own? And in fact, whenever you go from their project to your project, there's probably going to be a slight difference. You know, if you're working with something like the Raspberry Pi, maybe you've had an update in the operating system and the newer version of the operating system which you're running doesn't support the same features or in the same way as the old one. Maybe there's a slight change in hardware. Maybe the configuration's just a little bit different. Maybe they did something wrong. How are you going to debug it if you don't understand how the code works, if you're just copying and pasting? We've got to look under the hood in order to figure out exactly how to best create our projects. You know, copying also can create all sorts of unwanted effects. Um, you know, for example, you may just want a small part of their functionality, but if you copy and paste it, you're going to grab that whole bit and bring it into your code not understanding why you've got all this extra code and what it does because that was actually not part of what you were originally looking for. Um, there's also a potential lack of quality. I'll talk about why. It's not because they're bad programmers, but there is a potential lack of quality of their code for a good reason. It may also be that it doesn't match your coding style. You know, I've been told that there are two types of programmers in this world. They're the ones that would do some, something like this. You got some sort of a function name, parameters, curly brace, statements, curly brace, right? Or there's those that would do it like this, where you have the curly brace like that, all right? Uh, I'm not going to tell you which one I prefer, but I have really good reasons for the one that I use. Jeff, you know that I'm talking to you. Anyway, that said, if you're just copying their code, it may be that it makes it difficult to read because they're not following your style. But you know, there's also, for a number of reasons, the potential for bugs or vulnerabilities in the code that they created. They may have let out, left out critical validation, uh, you know, condition statements which do validation of data and so forth. There's also this other thing that's kind of, you know, unexpected. I've had a lot of students come to me with bugs that they couldn't fix for exactly this reason. Whenever I make my students their instructions, I usually use a word processor and I put code snippets in it. Well, my word processor does all sorts of autocorrect or, or auto replace and may insert hidden characters, unprintable characters. You know, if you've got an unprintable character that has been copied and pasted into your code, it may well cause a bug. Also, it may do things like change quotation marks into some of these smart quotation marks, which won't be read properly by a compiler or an interpreter. In fact, if you're looking at JavaScript, for example, there are three ways that, that uh, JavaScript uses quotation marks. Um, and if you switch back and forth, the string that is inside of those quotation marks will be handled differently.
Let's talk about the demonstrator themselves. You know, they have a very good reason for doing the demonstration that they're doing. And oftentimes it's on YouTube. And there's a theory that more people will watch your video if it's less than 10 minutes. So imagine what might have been cut if the video was reduced down to 10 minutes. This includes things like you didn't get an opportunity to see what the, what the programmer went through to get to the point where he's showing you the code. He or she is showing you the code. They may have gone through a number of iterations, including figuring out what worked and what didn't work, going through an overall design process. How are we going to initialize? How are we going to utilize? How are we going to close things up? You don't get to see all of that. You just get to see the regurgitation of the code. In addition, Oftentimes they use short identifiers for their functions and their variable names. By using short identifiers, sometimes when you go back and look at the code that you've copied, it doesn't make sense what exactly the pur what purpose this particular variable serves. Modularization, in other words, partitioning your code into pieces takes time. And explaining how the code is being modularized, being separated into pieces, may not be obvious from just watching that short 10 minute video. In addition, we talked a moment ago about vulnerabilities, checking your data, verifying your, validating your data, making sure that it's correct, and making sure that there's no path that a malicious user could get in. Well, going through that process takes time, time that is not spent in the code that's being presented in that particular video. Oftentimes, they will cut and paste from their own files. So they're, they've already got a working file on another screen that you can't see. They copy and the paste, bam, that code suddenly magically appears and there's no true explanation for how it got there. You're missing that piece. In addition, talked about the different ways that programmers program, right? There's two kinds of programmers in this world. Well, a lot of the time they're using certain styles in order to get more lines of code on the screen. A lack of white space makes it very difficult to understand your code. Now I have a very dear friend who, Jeff, whose name I've already mentioned once, who talks about coding just a little bit and then testing it. So he calls it code a bit, test a bit, code a bit, test a bit. You code a very small portion, then you test it. Then you code a very small portion, and then you test it. If you're just copying and pasting code, you're getting a block of code, you're not testing it. If there is a bug in there somewhere, you've got a lot of lines to go through before you figure out what's wrong. So whenever you're, whenever you're doing this process of watching somebody coding in a, in, you know, on an online venue, then code just a little bit of what they've done, pause the video, test it, see if you can get that working, see if it makes sense what's working. So that way you can kind of code a bit, test a bit, code a bit, test a bit. And anytime you get something that's working, I advise you to save a new version. Just keep updating the version. And don't worry about these characters you're putting in file names. Those characters are free, right? Use file names that make sense. In other words, you know, version where LCD began working, version where I was able to store log to a file. So make sure that you've got each one of these versions well identified so that if something happens and you can't figure out how to unbreak what you broke in the current version, you can always go back to an earlier one to figure out how it's done. Also, if you decide that maybe later on you didn't want to include this particular feature, you can go back and go to an earlier version which didn't have that earlier feature. I spoke just a moment ago about compartmentalizing, whoops, compartmentalizing code. Categorizing your code. Now, oftentimes, whenever they're, you're seeing these demonstrations, in the, or, you know, in, the, in the interest of speed, it's one monolith, one big block of code. Categorize it into well-known Category, categories of functions so that you can say, okay, right now what I'm doing is I'm initializing code. So we could do initialize or clean up, you know, something that you do at the end or uh, if you're programming in some sort of a, a, a language that allows event-driven programming, you can worry about your events. You can do things like utilities you can do certain code for debugging, 
uh, important, the user interface. All right, uh, inter, you know, if we're talking about embedded system design, inter device communications. So if you are working on taking the code that is given to you, at least make a, an effort to figure out, okay, are we initializing this? Are we closing things up? Is this debug code? Is this a utility? You know, if you're talking about a utility, you know, something as simple as, are we converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius or meters to feet or whatever it is? So these types of utilities, that will be in one categorization. One categorization. And if you can separate it physically in your code, give you a much better chance of debugging it. If you are committed to copying somebody else's code, let me at least give you some suggestions for how to make your understanding of that code a little better. First of all, if you've got code that you have have copied from somebody and you're pasting into your own work, comment heavily. All right. At a minimum, go through the code and, and as you say, show that you understand what each line of code does by adding comments. Um, not only does this make it so that it gives you a better understanding of what the code is doing, but you know, if you're talking about retention, listening to somebody say something gives you a real low amount of retention. I've heard numbers like 5%. If you write it down, if there's some process of taking what you have heard and understand and write it down, even if you're just copying down what he's saying, he or she is saying as they're programming, that gives you a much better level of retention. Okay, maybe like 10 or 15%, but it's still an improvement. Make sure that you document where you found the code. So the URL of where this particular demonstration was done, any sort of references that they make in, in the presentation, make sure that you document that. So include it so that if you're going through maybe a week later, a month later or so forth, and you're saying, how did I, where did I find this? I remember vaguely watching this video, but where was it? Make sure that the comments are in there. Also, I've noticed that, you know, as I said earlier, that many online tutorials use terrible, terrible names for their, for their variables and the, for their functions. You know, don't just call a file, you know, if you've got a handle for a file, don't, don't just call it file, call it file, file containing hourly updates for temperature. All right. That way, when you come back and you see that name, oh, that's what that's for. I know exactly what's supposed to go in that file. Also, retype the code. Don't necessarily just copy and paste. And this does you so much good. First of all, it gives you muscle memory in terms of the coding, you know? So each programming language has different characteristics to its syntax. And for example, curly braces, parentheses, periods, colons, they're all used a little differently in each language. And so if you are over and over again retyping the code, that gives you muscle memory in your fingers to know, oh yes, a semicolon goes here. Oh yes, a curly brace goes here. Oh yes, a parenthesis goes here. And so it gives you that muscle memory. In addition, it reinforces the syntax that you're trying to learn for that particular programming language. You also get an opportunity to use your own coding style, right? <laughs> it also reviews, as you're typing the code, it gives you a chance to review what the presenter showed you. How they, how they coded, if you're typing it in again, you get an opportunity to review what is in their, their thought process. Lastly, it gives you an opportunity to make sure none of those hidden characters are hidden inside of your code. Also, make small modifications. All right. You know, do something simple, like if I've got a function that's got some parameters that are being passed to it, modify those parameters just a little bit to see what their effects are. 
modify the output format. Um, for example, change what the strings are, change colors, change position. Heck, you can even change the device that you're going to. In an embedded systems class, you may have an LCD display and a monitor terminal. Well, instead of outputting it to a terminal, output it to the LCD display. Just simply make modifications, make small modifications, and see how they affect the operation of the code that you've copied. Also, convert values. For example, if something's in feet and, and you want it in meters, do the conversion. Make sure that you've got a utility that's there that'll support you to do that. You can also do something called a library or create something called a library. You know, modularization of code is great whenever you've got these functions and these utilities that are very general purpose that you can call in any one of your pieces of code. Learn how to create a library of routines for your programming language, for the selected programming language, and start your own library so that you can start pulling these things out generalize their code, create a function that is the generalized version of their code. It'll make it easier for you to create new applications, to debug the applications, and in fact make it so that you do eventually program your projects quicker. So if you want to create truly cool projects, learn to dig a little bit deeper than just copy and paste.